recently on the uh, YouTube channel and on the Adobe eLearning community forums, I've seen some questions relating to progress indicators. And I think that seems to be something that's trending lately. And uh, on my channel specifically, I had some questions related to, in fact, at least two questions that I can think of related to quiz question progress indicators. So not only uh, a visual indicator to let you know that you are four questions into a 10 question quiz, but also uh, something that reminds you of, of your success so far and unfortunately your failures so far as well. And I was trying to rack my brain about this. I, I seem to recall that I did something like this before. So I started going through some of my old projects and I came across, in fact, it was literally the last project I worked on for my last employer before I went freelance. And uh, this particular project was, uh, you know, a pretty simple information security awareness, just, you know, email awareness, spam awareness, phishing um, awareness and things like that. And, you know, we wanted to have uh, some kind of indicator at the, at the end of the quiz. I hadn't done that before, but I thought about it at the time. And once I looked at the project uh, today, I realized, oh, it's actually really very simple. So I thought I'd share this process with you guys and hopefully uh, it answers some of the questions that people had, but also, um, you know, inspires some of the rest of you to add something similar to your projects as well. So what I did, this is what I came up with, was at the bottom, I, I wanted it to be fairly inconspicuous, so I didn't make it overly large. I just created 10 smart shapes, and this is the first quiz uh, question in my final quiz. I added these 10 circular smart shapes and uh, the first thing I did was I created a multi-state object for them. Um, this is not a button multi-state object. This is just two additional user states that I created. So let's go into the properties panel for one of them selected and uh, go into state view. And I'll just slide this over so we can see it kind of large as well. Uh, we'll go about 200% here. And what you can see is that there's the normal state, which is essentially uh, just white. And I added, of course, uh, an inner shadow to give it sort of a 3D um, punched in effect. And then I created two additional versions. One of them is called correct. Uh, where I simply filled it in with green and the same thing for incorrect except I filled it in with red kind of borrowing from the stoplight um, scenario you know go means good red means stop green uh, is go um, I guess I don't know uh, let me exit from the state here so let's get back on track uh, and the other thing I did with these is rather than trying to manage you know, 10 little tiny uh, smart shapes uh, on 10 different slides, so 100 different smart shapes, I had these appear for the rest of the project. So if you go to the timing panel, you can see that I've selected these and they are displaying for the rest of the project. So you don't need to worry about t nothing too advanced here. It's pretty straightforward. And the rest of it is actually managed through your quiz panel. So let's bring that up and I'll show you what happens there. I should point out that I've labeled all of these smart shapes as well. Uh, the first one is labeled um, one, spelled out of course. Uh, the second one is two and three and four all the way up to ten. So this being the first slide of the final quiz, um, we have two things happen, two potential things happening. So the on success action for this quiz question is simply to change the state of the one object, which is this first little circle here, to the correct state, and then continue playing the project. It's important that you check off continue playing the project. I have this question uh, slide uh, set at about a, a second and a half. There's no narration with it and the pause occurs just before it. So the continue playing the, uh, playing the project will almost immediately jump to the next quiz question. 
If you get it wrong, of course, uh, there's only one attempt for this quiz question. So the, the failure action or last attempt action is change the state of that one object again to incorrect or change it to red. And it also continues playing the project. So you keep just going and going and going till you get to the end of the quiz. And the end result is by the throughout the progress of your quiz, you'll see little green and red indicators letting you know how you've done so far. If a pass for a course like this is, let's say, 80%, uh, you can't afford to have more than two red dots and, and so on. So uh, let's give this a try. I'm going to run this from this slide so you can see what the effect is here. So here's our first uh, quiz question slide. And if I answer this correctly, I should see a green dot right here at the bottom here. So after opening an email attachment, you notice suspicious activity on your computer. What should you do? Um, well, we should report it to the service desk. That's the correct action. And it changes to green, as you can see. Let's try and get this next one correct. Uh, um, We'll take a guess here if I remember this course correctly. Um, yeah, there we are. So, so far, three greens. Let's purposely get one wrong. Oh, I'm doing well for someone who's trying to get one wrong. There we go. There's a wrong answer. So now you can see you know, I've had some success. I know that I can get away with one more incorrect answer because I, I can see I just have one wrong. Uh, let's let's do another wrong answer. Oh, so I got two wrong answers. I have to get this one right. Um, I think it's this one here. There we go. And of course, what I did on my final quiz results slide is I put the continue button, which is labeled rate this course, directly over top of those smart shapes so you don't see them on the quiz results slide. Even if I had uh, been unsuccessful uh, completing this, I would see uh, a, re a retake the course or retake the quiz button, and it also would cover up those, those items as well. Guys, if you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com, follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.